In this video, I'm gonna explain what the RhythmBot web app is and how it works. So this was created by an old student of mine, Jamie Howard, who's an excellent drummer living in England. Uh, he did the programming. I had had a similar idea, very coincidentally, earlier, and we collaborated on this and have drawn in several aspects of my own curriculum for my own website. So it is going to be particularly useful for anyone who is coming to this tool from jpbouvetmusic.com. So what it is, is a rhythmic vocabulary trainer, right? And it does this by generating random rhythms according to the parameters that you set. Right? So they could be very basic rhythms, they could be very advanced rhythms, they could be straight time, triplet, or mixed, and it will generate you new rhythms ad infinitum uh, for you to practice uh, in any of many different ways. Um, so, for those of you who are not familiar with the idea of rhythmic vocabulary, in the briefest possible way, um, rhythmic vocabulary is your store of rhythmic melodies that you can create with. Now, a key issue that people have with their rhythmic vocabulary is the same thing that happens with our speaking vocabulary, where our speaking vocabulary is smaller than our, our comprehension vocabulary, what we can understand, right? So in books, you read a lot of words that you won't necessarily use, but you know how they're, how they're spelled, you know what they mean. You, in theory, could maybe use them, but they don't come to you in the moment when you're speaking. This is very common with drumming, right? And this is characterized by, um, well, I, I should say, this is demonstrated in examples that I find over and over again with students where I, I give them an interesting rhythm, right? a complex rhythm. They can play it rather easily. And then I say, okay, Think of a rhythm like that, using the same tool, using the same you know, chunk of melody, the same type of uniqueness, and they can't think of it themselves. But this is a major problem because if you can't think of the rhythm yourself, your drumming is not going to get more interesting. You'll be stuck playing boring things, uh, and if you work on speed, you'll play boring things fast. If you work on coordination, you'll play boring things in very you know, uh, coordinated ways. But at the core of a lot of drummers' uh, uh, limits to their creativity is this basic inability to come up with simply interesting melodies, right? To be able to go ba, boom, boom, right? If that process is very easy, then the myriad ways that you can decide to to apply that to the drum set, that's where you spend your time work, working out the coordination. But without that initial element, right, without the, 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 the basic vocabulary to create the, the melody that's interesting, uh, no matter what you do with the boring melody that you come up with, it's always going to be exactly that kind of boring. So ideally, this is a tool to help us get past that to a, learn to read very well, uh, because this is reading flashcards and to more than read, to become literate and, 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 and to be thinking in rhythms, right? So these symbols that represent, like the notation is a symbol that represents a specific sticking and a specific melody and a specific sound, right? You want these things stored away in a way that is, is easy to recall and upon recall happens automatically, right? And the, the, our goal is the level of automaticity that you have in your native tongue, right? When you look at a word, when I look on the screen at the word rhythm, I cannot choose to see that as only lines and curves, right? The moment my eyes you know, rest upon it, it is understood and everything about it, its pronunciation, its meaning, uh, associations I have with the word, that all happens automatically. And that's the level of automaticity we want to get to with these small symbols, these chunks of melodic information. And it can happen very easily because there really, as you'll see, aren't that many individual sort of letters, if you will, or maybe they're more like words that we need to work with in the rhythmic language. So that's where we're going. Let's take a look at how this works. Okay, so in essence, this is a random rhythm generator. So when you click random rhythm, the orange button, boom, it gives you a random rhythmic melody is what I call them, according to a bunch of parameters that you've set over here on the left. We'll talk about those in a sec. First, let's start with the real basic controls. Number of bars, simple enough. Then it will give you uh, a two bar phrase that is randomized. Up at the top here, obviously the play button, and you can click space bar.
great. Uh, you can shuffle the bars. If you have a few that you're like, ooh, I like these. Uh, I don't want to think of new ones. Let me just rearrange them and get to know these pieces a little better. You could, if you had, for example, a four bar phrase, um, you could say, ooh, okay, this bar is really, actually there's a few interesting bars here. This one's really tripping me up. Let me isolate it and let me just loop that one. So if I click the space bar now, it'll just loop that one bar and I can work on that. Um, that is that. If you've got something selected, you can then clear the selection right there. So that's those top controls, simple enough. Now let's take a look at all this stuff over here on the left. So there's a lot we can control here and we can uh, use, like everything's there for a purpose, right? So we uh, can use these to help aid our practice in various different ways. So right, first at the top of the left side here, we've got mode. Once means it just plays once, right? Like you just saw, I clicked play and it played through the measure once. End, great. Loop, self-explanatory. Standard loop mode just means it loops like this. Great, you're trying to get familiar with the rhythm. You can loop that, you can play over it if you're treating it as hits or a kick drum pattern or something. And then you've got uh, this other mode under loop called reading. Now, whenever you see the word reading here, what it means is that it's gonna generate rhythms infinitely without stopping itself. So you need at least two bars for this to make any sense. You'll see why in a moment. But if I select reading and I just click the space bar, I click go, it's gonna play the first, the first bar and then it's gonna to move to the second bar and replace the first bar and then replace the second bar. So I end up with an infinite reading exercise, which will look something like this. Here we go. First bar, second bar. First bar is different now, second bar. So they change constantly. So this is going to be huge for people's reading. I'm really excited about that part. You can obviously make this four bars, do the same thing, and it'll keep on going. So that is the loop mode. Uh, and then to the right, you've got trade mode, which again is what it sounds like. It will play the rhythm selected and then give you a, a bar of just click for you to play it on your own with the click. This is kind of like flashcards, if you will, where you... Uh, uh, try to get the right answer, and then you're presented with the correct answer immediately after. This is a really important way to learn new things and memorize new information. So if we do this, again, standard mode, it is just going to give me back and forth with this measure that I've selected. Let me do a new one here. Ooh, this one looks cool. All right, so uh, I believe it lets me go first. So it lets you attempt it first. So it'll be four bars, four clicks, count in, and then it's my turn to, to do it. So here we go. Me. Da, da, ga, ga. Boom, got computer. Met me. Got, got. Boom, got. Got, got. Got, got. Got. All right, so a little flashcard action there. Then to the right, you've got the reading mode under trade, and this will do a similar thing, right? This is the infinite uh, replenishing of new melodies here. Uh, this again only works really if you have at least two bars. So if I do this, right, it, it'll count me in. I will read these two bars, and then it will play the two bars to show me whether I was right or wrong. And as it does that, it will change, giving me a chance to see what the new bars are. So it looks like this. My turn. Da 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 Great, so that's trade mode. And you've got this mode over here. The last mode here is click. So click will not play you the rhythm. So it will count you in, and then it will just, you'll see it'll highlight the bar and it'll sort of guide you through this. So in standard mode here, uh, it will just, uh, yeah, count me in and, and I'll go for it here. So it goes, sounds like, uh, here we go. Right, so I can adjust these however I want. 
And that's just me practicing this, right? Because sometimes having, right, eventually you want to be able to, if you're working on reading, you don't actually want the guide telling you the right answer the whole time as you do it. You'll get good enough at reading that eventually having the, you know, snare drum in this case, play the rhythm alongside you will actually be a distraction, sort of like a crutch that you don't want to lean on. Um, and then to the to the right here of standard, this is something I'm extremely excited about. This is the reading uh, setting under click. This will, again, just sort of give you infinite patterns to read, but crucially here, it won't play them. So you'll just have a click, and this is just as if you have an infinite number of pages turning for you before your very eyes here. So if we go, let's go four uh, measures in a row, the random rhythm, by the way, if you click R, it gives you, uh, oh, sorry, N, it gives you new rhythms. So if I do this now, I will never need to stop uh, and <laughs> each measure will replenish itself and I can read uh, for forever. Here we go. Two, first line. Back to the top. Right, so that'll just go on forever. And that is about as good as reading practice can possibly get because the problem when you have pages in a physical book of reading is that by the, you know, even by the third or fourth time you do them, there's some amount of familiarity. Even if you can't remember them and recite, you know, the passages from memory, the familiarity makes it sort of, uh, uh, it, it makes it so that you're not really sight reading as if for the first time. So I'm really excited about this aspect of it. So those are the modes. I know there's a lot we can do there, a um, lot of possibilities, but that's how basically how those work. And now let's look at some of the stuff that is below mode. So after mode, if I go loop and I'll go standard, put it back to two bars, keep things kind of simple here. Beneath that, you've got subdivision, right? So right now we're in straight time, uh, which is, you know, binary. So we're thinking one E enda, two E enda, three E enda, four E enda, which is why you've been seeing a bunch of 16th note patterns over here. If I underneath that click eighth notes, it will only, and I click N for new rhythm, it will only keep me, right, the fastest I'll go is the eighth note grid. Right? This is gonna be really important for um, drummers who haven't been playing very long or who are new to reading. It'll also be really important for anyone working on uh, jazz reading. Most swung jazz charts are written in swung eighth notes. For example, this one would be da 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 um, So that'll be helpful there. Um, and then you've got next to straight time, you've got triplets, right? So this is ternary based in three. We click N here, get a bunch of triplet rhythms, right? So this sounds like two and a three and a four. And of course, mixed. So this will give you uh, straight and triplet time stuff, which can get a little crazy, like this one here. Three and a four and a ba ba da. That's a pretty cool one. <laughs> All right, so that's the subdivision, pretty self-explanatory. And then you look down below that, we've got playback mode, right? Or sorry, so th this is the instrument that plays back. Right now we are hearing a snare drum playback. Uh, that's sort of the default setting. Uh, you can select kick because one common way to use this type of app, this type of exercise, these type of flashcards is, for example, for freeing your kick drum underneath a groove, right? So if I do this now, I'll create a different rhythm. Um, it's gonna be a pretty complicated rhythm. <laughs> Let's do that one. And this will turn, you know, just play back as a, as a kick drum. Simple enough, so you can hear it as a kick drum uh, instead of a snare. And then over here, you've got the groove uh, option and this will play back as a groove so if i play this here and it sounds like All right so it adds the hi-hat it adds the backbeat and if you click groove the groove button again or you click this little text beneath it where it says click to edit symbol backbeat and swing Click either of those, it brings up this menu where you can adjust the parameters of the groove. So different hi-hat options, you've got several you know, downbeat, upbeat, a couple hi-hat 
ac uh, sorry, eighth note accent options. You get into 16th notes, um, and then you get da 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 and da 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 da. This can match the kick. You can do the down up rule, which is something from my website. So let's say we're going to do 16th notes like this one. And then the backbeat, right? This is two and four. Next to it, you've got a backbeat on three, which gives it a halftime vibe, which we'll give it a try. Backbeat on four, and then all four backbeats. These are things I call alternate backbeats. Um, you can turn the backbeat off if you're, for example, doing, you know, you're doing some jazz swing practice, you don't want a backbeat, uh, you can just do that. You can also change the, the hi hat sound to a ride up here. Uh, again, might help if you're thinking about jazz things. And at the bottom here, you can adjust the swing level, right? So all the way to the right is full perfect triplets. One, a two, a three, a four. Stopping at the quintuplet uh, stop here. This is going to put it on the uh, sorry the fourth quintuplet. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, which is sort of uh, right between straight and triplet. That is, just a heads up, that is going to be most useful probably at a much slower tempo if you actually want to be able to count and figure out where the quintuplet is because at high tempos that becomes very difficult. So let's see what, I'm going to make this straight for now. Let's see what this sounds like if we, with these parameters I just selected. So here we go. Great. If I want to change some of this, why right, we go back to uh, eighth notes, uh, regular backbeats, and let's say we go like twenty uh, seven percent swung. It'll sound like. Let's pick a new one. Why not? Right, so anyone who wants to work on that half swung kind of swanky vibe, uh, that is the way to do it. So I'm gonna put this back on snare for the moment and let's move further down here. So we're gonna talk about bars, obviously the, the go button and the clear button. Now down here, we've got presets. Presets are drawn from my, what I call the big 10 and the big eight. The big 10 is straight time, the big eight is triplets. These are uh, you know, sort of rudiments with melodic content that I consider essential. And these are a, a major sort of a part of the core curriculum of my own teaching on my website. So all of these will give you, for example, uh, if you take paradiddles, this is a familiar example here. We only need one bar. What you'll get here is the right hand melody of a paradiddle. Right? So right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left. Right, right, left, right, left, left, which sounds like bat, ba, bat, ba, bat, ba, bat, ba. Okay, so these presets all course, I'm not gonna go into any in-depth description of what the Big Ten is. You can stop on my website if you uh, wanna figure that out and search for the Big Ten in the search box. Um, but just so you know, there's a bunch of useful rhythms here. Groups of three, groups of five, what I call the 16 invisible rhythms, four permutations of the paradiddle, um, doubles and singles. Doubles includes inverted doubles, etc. So anyways, presets are in there. If you are in triplets, there are different presets. Again, these are the big eight, every four triplets, doubles and triplets, every five triplets. And then uh, again, things that uh, are essential building blocks in my curriculum, short melodies, long melodies, swung down ups and Afro Cuban down ups. And there's all sorts of cool melodies to get into there. Complexity, let's go back to straight time. If we go to complexity, this is just level one through five. These are somewhat arbitrary. I have selected what is uh, less and more complicated. Uh, the default is at five, so you will see just every option possible, basically, uh, in 16 notes. If I go back to one, then you get quarter notes, um, eighth notes, quarter note triplets. If we go to level two, it adds eighth note rests on the downbeats, like on beat two here. So you have... Um, well, that's just, uh, that can be, that can create some more interesting rhythms. Level three, you get some 16th notes, but the less syncopated versions of 16th notes here. Lots of that stuff. And then level four, you get some more syncopation. And level five, you get full on everything uh, you could uh, ever want or imagine. Then underneath that is custom. Right now it is off, but if you click it, you can actually select which chunks of melody you include and exclude. 
Now, I will leave it to you to find creative ways to use this, but just a couple small ideas. You could, for example, let's say you're working on double bass stuff. You could select all the ones that have a bunch of, you know, uh, notes in a row. And then you could say, okay, let me think of a cool melody with all these 16th notes. do 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 Next. I mean, this will write your whole gen album for you, basically. That's pretty fun. You can also, if something's giving you a hard time, um, select all, and I can say, oh, the E of, you know, the E is really giving me a hard time. Uh, e and is really giving me a hard time. So let me just leave those out for now. And now I can, you know, I can work on my stuff and I'll get, I'll add those one by one as I feel comfortable. So as you can use that, uh, you know, however you want, uh, just to guide, you can also, if your teacher's on board with how this works, then uh, they could be selecting sort of one item at a time. I often teach these chunks one at a time, introduce them one at a time myself as I'm teaching. So that is the custom uh, selection there. And at the bottom, you've got playback controls. Uh, BPM adjustment, simple enough. Swing adjustment, right? So this will, right, when you're in the groove, like we talked about earlier, there's a swing adjustment in the groove thing. But when you're in snare or kick mode, the swing control is down here, right? So you can go perfectly straight is zero, and you can go perfectly swung is 100. Da, ba, da, ba, da, 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 ba, da. And anywhere in the middle, again, in case you want to work on that kind of half swung thing, if I do that here, uh, and put it on a kick drum, why not? It'll sound like. Right, so a little swung, a little straight, sounding cool. Uh, and then you've got, you can have the count in on or off if you don't want to. Ghost notes, you'll notice there are little snare quiet notes between all of the, that fill all of the space between the notes. You can turn those off. You can turn the metronome off. Sometimes you don't need it, sometimes you don't want it. Sometimes it's a good test of yourself to make sure you can just hear these rhythms and play them without the metronome. So those are the main controls. There's tons you can do here. Um, we aren't, I'm not gonna dig into specific exercise in this video. There's gonna be a, a demo separate video that explores a bunch of ways to actually, uh, a bunch of ideas to actually use this in a practice room. But that's the main features. And if you look up here, you've got some basic, right, you can go dark mode because everyone loves dark mode. Uh, reset the whole thing if you want. Uh, if you click support rhythm bot, this is just a donation thing via PayPal that will go 100% uh, to Jamie Howard, who is again, the drummer and programmer who made this, right? We collaborated, I was more of an ideas guy. He had a lot of the same ideas. Um, and ultimately he put in all the time, he did all the programming and he, he put in a, a lot of work into making this what it is. So support RhythmBot, I mean, he did that for free just because he wanted to make this tool that he thought would be useful for the drum community. So. If you want to support Jamie, uh, a little something here and there would be lovely, I'm sure. You can send feedback if something is wrong or you have an idea for us. If you have a rhythm pulled up, you can share it. And if you click the tutorial button, it will take you to a tutorial. Uh, well, it would take you to this tutorial that you are watching now. So that's a little meta. Um, <laughs> and that is the rhythm bot. Thanks for watching. I'm really excited to see how uh, people use this in ways that I have not even begun to think of. Um, and yeah, I'll see you soon.